All right, it's good to be here this morning. If you've got your Bibles, turn with us to the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We're going to get down in the end of the chapter and uh, uh, take a little text out of verse 13 by the help of the Lord. And uh, we want you to be much in prayer today that, and remember the re request this week uh, that's been brought out. Amen. If you found your place this morning, you'd like to read this with us this morning. Uh, Start reading with me in verse 13. Listen to what it says. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. For unto he called you by our gospel uh, to obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast. I like that right there. And hold to the traditions which you have been taught, uh, whether by word or by epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, uh, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given unto us everlasting consolation and a good hope through grace, comfort your hearts uh, and establish you in every uh, good word and work. Amen. As I begin to look into these verses of scripture this week and begin to think about uh, those things and when I saw that little phrase in verse 13 there, uh, chosen you unto salvation, I began to think about uh, my conversion and what God done and how God began uh, even as a young child to began to plant the seed down in my heart and soul. And, and uh, uh, after a period of time, now God let me run just as wild as I could be for a while. Uh, and he watched over me and he took care of me. And uh, there's no doubt in my mind two or three different times that uh, uh, God uh, uh, watched over me to the point where that uh, uh, I could have lost my life in a split, in a split second. But gone, amen, amen. Uh, out running up and down the road, flying in old cars and and doing things that I hadn't ought to do. And uh, uh, my my mind goes back to a time down there uh, in Deacon's Creek down there that I kicked the door open on the house with a shotgun in my hand. And I'm thinking, my, my, my. And when I look back at that, how easy I could have went out of this world. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, that was, that was a time that I don't like to think about, but uh, by, I began to think about those things and what God began to show me, uh, that he had chosen me unto salvation. And as I began to think about what, uh, how God chose me, amen, then my mind got just as big as it could possibly get, amen. And I want you to turn over to the book of John, chapter 13, uh, for a few moments this morning. Not chapter 13, John chapter 3, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll get into chapter 13 here in a little bit, uh, if the Lord will, amen. But in John 3, 16, listen to what it says. And this is a very familiar scripture, and I've been studying on it all week, thinking about it. And uh, I thought about the love of God, first of all. He said, for God so loved, amen. And uh, uh, I never really gave it a lot of thought uh, about the love of God uh, when I was uh, growing up and and. Uh, everything like that. I just know that you know that that, that God cared for me and God took care of uh, uh, when I was little. And and mom and dad, they always get you know we always had food to eat and a good a good dry dry place to live, clothes to wear, and uh, you know and I knew that they loved me, Amen. Uh, but when God began to show me that He loved me, Amen. Uh, by as I grew up and began to think about what all the people. That took time. Uh, now I love to fish, I guess, as good as anything I've ever done in my life. And when I was a kid, I'd, uh, I'd stop down there, and I called him Uncle Jesse. Uh, and uh, uh, he always kept me some worms, Doug Gar, and I had some old velvet cans. And, and uh, I'd get me a can of worms, and down the road I'd go, down, down on the creek. And I'd start there about the mouth of the branch, and I'd start fishing up through there. By the time I'd get up to... Uh, there next to where Murray Chandler was uh, lived there, I'd fish up to about the mouth of Clare Branch, and, and I'd be walking back down the road, and she'd holler at me. And uh, she'd, and uh, I'd, uh, 
she'd say, uh, see, you've caught a good mess of fish and everything. She said, but I got a few things here. If you don't care, would you help me just a few minutes? And uh, I'd lay my stuff down over there and, and go up there and, and, and just in a minute, uh, she'd tell me what she needed me to do and it wasn't ever much. Maybe pick up some old sticks and limbs out of her yard. But what she was using that for was an opportunity. Hey, and uh, uh, I'd go up there and she'd say, wait this minute and I'll go in there and get you a glass of tea. Hey, and I'd sit there on the porch of that old house and she'd come out and hand me a, a, a glass of tea. And it wasn't just, just a few words later, she was telling me how much God loved me. Uh, amen. And me just a, just, just a young and a growing up. And, and, you know, you don't forget things like that. Uh, uh, as, as you know, and God began to show me these things, amen, as I began to think of that. And, and uh, as I read this, uh, I thought about how that God has chosen you and I, but not only you and I, friend, but God has chosen the whole world. Listen to what he says. For God so loved this world, amen. And I stopped right there about the world, and, and I thought about how big this is, amen. And you've heard me say time and time again that uh, God chose me before the foundation of this world. And there's a lot of scripture, and I spent a lot of time looking up several different places uh, concerning uh, what took place before God ever laid the mud seals down here in this world. Uh, and uh, uh, we were chosen, uh, friend, unto salvation before God ever created us and put us down here on this earth. God had chosen us. And uh, the third uh, person of the Godhead, which is the Holy Spirit of God that lives with you and I right today, amen, uh, he was there in the beginning, Jesus the Son, uh, amen, the second person of the Godhead was there in the beginning, amen, uh, and then uh, the great I Am, which is God the, the Holy Father, amen, uh, of all creation, amen, uh, and uh, they were all there, and, and, and the plan was set in port, it was set in motion, amen, uh, before God ever created, God set this plan in motion, and this plan was that he would create mankind in his own image, amen, and he'd give us a choice down here in this world, uh, whether to believe in him, uh, amen, or uh, turn away from him. Uh, either way, I mean, you know, God doesn't force himself upon anybody, amen. Now, he chose the foolishness of preaching uh, to save them which are lost, amen. The Bible says that you and I are begotten by the word and we're drawn by the Holy Spirit of God. And uh, we have, when we begin to really search out our hearts and our lives uh, from the time we were just children all the way up and how that God put people uh, in our way and put people in our path and uh, people that we uh, maybe at that time we didn't admire too awful much. And, and uh, uh, my mind goes back, I guess, to one some of the first people that ever told me uh, about Jesus when I was just a little feller. And we was living up in the holler there in, in Low Hensley's uh, little log house up there. And, and I couldn't have been much more than three or four or five year old, I, I, I can't remember. Jill was just a baby, I do remember that. Uh, but uh, we were living there and I, I went out there and when Enlo would be up there working in his little shop out there building bee gums and apple boxes for people and, and uh, he'd let me sit out there and Enlo would talk to me. And, and, and I remember him a talking a, a little bit and I guess it's probably the first time uh, that I ever remember anybody uh, uh, in my life, uh, you know, outside of my family that told me about this man called Jesus. Uh, and, you know, Enlo would speak. And I mean, I was just little on everything. And, you know, and when you begin to think about uh, how that God begins to work with you, amen. Now, God knew uh, me when I would be when I would be born into this world. He knew my substance before I was ever formed, according to the book of Psalms over there. Uh, amen. Not only did he know that, but he knew just exactly uh, what type of life that I would live. Amen. Uh, how that I would walk contrary to, uh, to God for a long time. Uh, he knew the day that I'd get saved by God's marvelous grace, that I'd call out to him. Uh, amen. He chose me uh, from the salvation uh, for salvation, amen. I was one of those, amen. And you say, well, well, is there people out there that's not chosen unto salvation? No, friend. Every person that's ever been conceived and born down here into this world, uh, amen. I believe that they've had an opportunity uh, somewhere or another in their life 
Amen. Uh, to hear the gospel or, or to believe and trust in him or believe, uh, amen. And that even in the day and time, friend, when the Bible says in the days of old, friend, uh, that God winked at man's ignorance, amen. There was no law. Uh, back before there was no law, amen, uh, there was no transgression, amen. People lived uh, and, and they lived good wholesome lives and they lived down here. And, and I'm going to get right there before I get too far out on the limb and they'll have a dozen people uh, trying to get a hold of me about different things. But listen to what I'm saying, amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, amen. Now this is in red writing in my book and Jesus as he has spoke these words. He's talking to him over there. And, and John was there with him at that time. Amen. Uh, and as he began to uh, hear these words, uh, he said, uh, the only begotten of the Son, referring to himself, uh, he said that uh, whosoever, amen, the whosoever is every person, friend, that's ever come into this world. Now, God may have dealt with people uh, different ways back in the days of old. Amen. Uh, but when he gave the law, the law brought man to the knowledge of sin. And when we found out that we were sinning and coming short of the glory of God, uh, God gave them laws that they could live their life. Amen. That they could do a sacrifice and they could roll it ahead every year. Uh, amen. Uh, till the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when G and the Bible said, uh, in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son into this world, friend, uh, that you and I might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. Friend, this is an abundant life. My life is not filled with sorrows and angry and, and stuff like that. I enjoy myself up at the church this morning in Coffer Ridge. We sung a, a song up there and uh, been a long time since I'd, I'd heard that song uh, sung in the name of the songs. I'm feeling fine. Uh, amen. And I am this morning. I'm feeling fine. Why? Uh, because I'm saved by God's marvelous grace. Because my hope uh, rests in a place called heaven this morning. Uh, because of what Jesus done for me uh, on, the call, on the cross of Calvary. He chose me uh, before the foundation of this world, friend. And, he, and the events of my life, friend, brought me to the point where that I bowed my head in an old-fashioned altar and cried out and asked Jesus Christ, to come into my heart and save me by his marvelous grace. Amen. And, I, and, and friend, I'll tell you right now uh, that I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. Uh, I read some scripture here earlier today and everything that it says if you be in Christ, you're a new creature. Old things are passed away and behold, but all things are become new. Amen. Now the old things are still in my mind, friend, and the devil uses them all the time against me. Look what you did and look the things that you was and how you was and, and, and all of those things are. Let me tell you something, devil. Uh, those things are under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, the sword will always be at my door. Amen. But I'm forgiven through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. I have a place to go, and that place is called heaven one of these days. Uh, by the help of the Lord, when I leave this world. Why? Uh, because I have believed. Whosoever believeth, look what it says, in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Now I'm going to read just a little bit more down through there. I'm not going to get into that, but I want to listen. Just, sometimes we stop right there. And, and we need to go on. When we need to read on down through there, he said, For God sent not his Son into this world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. Now, there's condemnation in this world. Amen. That mankind... Uh, because they uh, disobeyed God and they fell and death was pronounced upon man and death got on man's trail and Satan got involved uh, and he used the, the, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life and the lust of the eyes and the lust of, of the heart, all of those things. He uses that as a weapon against you and I. Uh, amen. But friend, I've got some news for you. Uh, the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, we're, we're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who died for us. Amen. Uh, and we, we truly are. He said for, uh, in verse 18, he said, he that believeth on him is not condemned. Amen. Uh, my condemnation, friend, is under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The world can point their finger and say, look, you look what you used to be. Look how you was. Look what you are now. Uh, and everything else like that, friend, it's under the blood. Yes, we all fail. 
and come short of the glory of God. We all walk a little contrary uh, to the things that we ought to do sometimes, amen. But God, that's what I like, but God. Several years ago, I was sitting up there under a big oak tree uh, doing a little deer hunting and uh, boy, I tell you what, there was awful as much of junk running through my, my mind you ever seen and uh, I was so low, I had to look up to see bottom. Uh, now that's just all there was to it. I mean, I was just plumbed down. I was, I was in between churches. I was, uh, you know, everything. You know, I wasn't. You know, things were just was falling apart all around me, uh, and my mind was just, just was just. I wanted to just to give up and quit. Remember a, a fellow over there in the Word of God. Over there, he got to that point in his life. He said, "I believe I'll just." Uh, he said, "I believe I'll just sit down." And he said, "I won't do it no more." Well, he didn't sit too awful long. Uh, amen. He, uh, he went to the ground. He sat there just a few minutes. And next thing you know, he said, I can't quit. He said, it's a fire burning down inside of me. Amen. And it is a fire down in our uh, down inside of us. Amen. It burns uh, and it goes out there. And he preached a lifetime. The Bible says down there that he never had a convert. Uh, he lived in a time when there was no open vision in the land. Amen. Uh, the, the, uh, he preached and he preached and he preached and, uh, and, and he never had a convert. Amen. But you know what? That didn't stop him. Amen. Uh, I believe we're getting down in the end of time, friend. Uh, I believe we're getting down right now where God's allowing things to happen down here in this world uh, because uh, it has to happen just exactly like the Word of God prophesies it did. Uh, the Bible prophesies in the last days that the love of many would wax cold. Uh, you've never seen a time like it is right now. Uh, friend, there was a time when I was young, I could go knock on anybody's door in the neighborhood. Most time you just walk on in. The door most time was open. Uh, you walk on in and, and, and the first thing they'd say, are you hungry? Can I get you something? You want something to drink? Now that was how they, you know, what caused that? The love of God down in their heart and soul. Uh, a lot of them did, some of them didn't go to church. Uh, but see, there was something about them people that uh, had trusted God down through their life. There was something about them. Uh, they, was, they had a love in their heart uh, for the community and a love in their heart for the people around them. And I got to see that. I'm thankful uh, that I got to live in a time, friend, when I was able to see that. Amen. I live in a time right now that I can't go to my neighbors. I, you know, it's just anymore. They, they don't, first of all, uh, they don't want you on their property. Second of all, they don't want to see you knock on their door. Uh, they don't want to see you come around. Uh, they, uh, the love of many has waxed cold. Uh, friend, uh, and if, you're, if you're broke down beside the road, uh, there'll be a hundred cars drive by you uh, until somebody comes along that recognizes you, and then they'll pull over and, and stop and everything. But it wasn't like that years ago. Years ago, if you was to drive it on the four-lane highway or something like that there, you wouldn't more than get off of the road and get the hood up on your car. There'd be somebody whoop in. Total strangers wanting to know if everything is all right and what they could do to help you and if they could go get anything for you. Amen. Why? Because they had a genuine love down in their heart and soul. Now the days and time, there's so much division and there's so much uh, uh, hatred in people's hearts today, uh, that the love has waxed cold. Waxed cold. And he's letting these things take place. You man. Let me read a little bit more. And, and this is the condemnation that light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Uh, for everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light. Uh, least their deeds should be reproved. Uh, but he that doeth truth, look at that little word, truth. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that, he, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Amen. Friend, uh, when God began to deal with me, and I knew that it was the truth. Friend, there was no other, there was no, you know, uh, regardless of what things people said and things people done. Amen. I knew. That it was God when God was dealing with me. I knew uh, that it was the truth. And when God brought me to that right point, amen, and that light was shined, I came to the light. Amen. I came to it. God chose me unto salvation. Friend, God has chosen you 
unto salvation. Listen to me, lost friend out there in the world. If you get to hear this message, uh, amen. God loves you. He gave, he gave his only son that you could have life and have it more abundantly. And then when you look at the, the next words below what it says there in verse 13, uh, through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Amen. God's, when God saved me, he sanctified me. He, he set me aside. He made me a part of the family of God. Amen. Uh, he sanctified me just as if I had never sinned. Now that's what the blood of Jesus Christ does for you, friend. Amen. All of your past life, I, it don't matter how ugly you've been, what all you've done, if you've committed murder, or uh, you just name it, uh, anything like that. Amen. Listen to me, friend. If you'll let Jesus Christ come into your heart and believe and trust in him and ask him to save you, he will sanctify you just as if you had never sinned. Amen. Just like a little child. Uh, that never has known uh, any guile in its mouth or anything like that. We were talking a little earlier about in the days of old, a lot of children uh, didn't make it. Amen. They used a lot of little graves in the graveyards back years ago when they didn't have the medicines that we have today. They didn't have uh, the opportunities. And if they could have got them to store most of the time, they didn't have no way to get them down there except a horse and buggy or something other. Uh, but there was a lot of little children. Uh, friend that didn't make it and them little children just about every one of the old graveyards around here there's a little cross with a lamb on it amen uh, friend that, uh, that to me that right there is just exactly that's what they are they're little angels uh, before God amen God took them out of this world before there was any guile whatsoever in their mouth amen and when God sanctifies you friend he sees you through the blood of his own son the Lord Jesus Christ, and he sees you as pure and as holy and without spot and without blemish, amen. He chose to redeem us back, friend, mankind. He chose to redeem mankind if they'll only believe in the truth, amen. Now, I want to take this go just a little further, amen. I want you to go back over in First uh, First Peter 3. Uh, I want to look at this just for a second. Uh, in First. Peter chapter 3, verse 9, listen to what it says. For the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. Uh, there's some people today that uh, uh, has uh, brought some railing accusations against God and against our Lord Jesus Christ. It's nothing short of blasphemy. And friend out there in the world, if you've heard this, you know what I'm talking about, who I'm talking about. It's blasphemy. And the Bible says over there, he that blasphemeth uh, the Holy Spirit, uh, they can't find, find repentance in this world, neither the world to come, friend. Uh, that's not a good place to be in. Uh, but they're energized of Satan, these people are, and uh, they're, they're doing things that they ought not to do. But listen to what he said. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, uh, but is long-suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance, friend. There, uh, God has sent his son into this world and he's long-suffering. He is. He's long-suffering. These people out there that's lived down in their lives all the way down, live wickedly, uh, uh, you know, with, you know, with all kinds of, of, of sin in their lives all the way down close to the end of their death. And then somebody, some preacher or somebody will walk in. Maybe them are laying flat on their back, nothing to do but look up. And they'll begin, that preacher begin to talk to them. Amen. And tell them that there is a God. And that God loves them. And just in a little while, the Holy Spirit of God will begin to stir their heart. Amen. Amen. When God stirs their heart, and they'll pray that prayer. Uh, amen. And ask Jesus Christ to come into their heart and soul. Now, friend, I don't know why sometimes that, that, that but still, God still gives still gives that opportunity. I believe as long as a man's got breath down his body uh, and, and he's never turned his back against God or never blasphemed God uh, the way that some people do, amen, he'll have an opportunity uh, as long as he can't lives down here in this world. You say, preacher, that's, that's, not, uh, not, that's, not, bi that's not Bible. Wait just a minute, friend. Uh, you tell me that it's impossible it's in the day and time that we live, in the world that we live, I live in the Bible, Bell. Amen. 
There's about 80 or 85 churches in Unicorn County. In our little old county, uh, friends, when you hold up the map, it's very, very small. Uh, amen. Uh, and, and there's like 80 some churches in here. I believe it'd be an impossibility for anybody that has grown up and, and to be an old man uh, in our community and in our valley where we live, friend, uh, to look at you and say they've never heard the gospel. Now there's possibility that that could happen, but I think it's very rare. The Bible says that you're begotten by the word. Amen. Maybe sometime when they were just little, like I was talking about earlier, when God began to deal with me at a young age, amen, and I got to knowing about the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, amen. I got to knowing through people that uh, cared enough to pray for me and tell me uh, uh, about a man called Jesus. I don't know what they knew, amen. Maybe they looked down through time and said, boy, yeah, you know, that boy would make a good preacher one of these days. I don't know. Uh, but I do know, friend, when it, in the fullness of time, God sent his call into my heart and soul. And I ran for a long time. My wife and I, we walked from a way back in on the mountain and I prayed back there till I wet the ground with my tears. Amen. The leaves were literally wet where I was bowed down, uh, uh, praying and seeking God's face and wanting to know for sure Amen, what God was calling me into. Amen, praise his wonderful name. Before I got off that mountain, God gave me the answer to that prayer. And he showed me how just exactly how, what he wanted for me to do. And it still took me a while, a friend, to get up the nerve how to cry out to God and say, God, I'm, I will. Amen, God, I will. I found myself in the, our community over there in a little church on the right side of the altar, left side of the altar, I'm sorry, on the left side of the altar on my knees, uh, up there, just me and God one Saturday. Uh, amen. And I wept again till I wet the carpet there beside that old altar at that church. Amen. And, and saying, God, I can't. God, I can't. God, I can't. And they found at last that still small voice began to speak down in my heart and soul. And he said, no, David, you can't, but I can Amen, if you'll only yield. And I yielded my heart, amen, over to God and said, God, I will. I will. And just a little bit later, I announced my calling that God had called me to preach. And i tell you what, it's been a glorious journey up to now, amen. And I praise his wonderful name. I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring, but God knows, amen. And I thank the Lord, the friend, that he called me uh, to salvation, amen. He chose me uh, before the foundation of this world, amen. Go back over to our scripture verses, amen, in 2 Thessalonians. I want to call your attention to something that I'll hush just in a minute by the help of the Lord, amen. Uh, uh, look back at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 uh, through 12. I want to read them, listen to what it says. Now, this is, to me, this is, this is uh, uh, it's sad for me to read this. Amen. It's sad, friend, out there for me to read it. Why? Because God has chosen us all to be saved by God's marvelous grace. But this is after the church is raptured. Amen. Uh, verse 7 there talks about the uh, the mystery of iniquity doeth already work. Only he that now letteth will let it till he be taken out of the way. Uh, the rapture of the church takes place. Verse 8 says that uh, the wicked will be revealed. That's the Antichrist, friend. Uh, amen. That the Lord eventually will consume with the spirit of his mouth and put him, throw him in the, uh, uh, the lake of fire forever and ever. Amen. Then verse 9 it says, Even who... Uh, even him who's coming is after the working of Satan uh, with all power and signs and lying wonders. Uh, amen. Listen to what it says. And all the sevilness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not. Listen to this. They receive not the love of truth. Amen. They chose not to receive the salvation that God brought into this world through his darling son, the Lord Jesus Christ. In that clip I seen the other day, they called everything that you see right here in my hand from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21. Jesus said, Lo, I come into the volume of the book. It's written to me. They chose to call it fake news. They love not the truth. 
Listen to what this said. They love not the truth that they might be saved. That's sad, isn't it? It's sad that we live in a world, friend, uh, out there uh, that the, the truth the, the, of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Jesus said uh, in John 14, 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That is the truth. That's the only way you'll get to heaven. And if you choose not, friend, to believe the love of God and the truth of God's word, listen to what he's going to do to you. Listen, this is, this is, this is not, nothing that it, you can't just sneer at this and you can't just look around and say, well, that preacher don't know what he's talking about. This is the word of truth, friend, that I'm reading to you. Listen to what it says. And for this cause, look what it says. And for this cause. Now let's stop right there just a second. For what cause? Because they believe not the truth. They've heard the gospel. We're living in a time, friend, the gospel is going out all over this world. Amen. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is being preached everywhere. Amen. All over this world. You can't, I've got a device right here in my pocket. I can hold this up. There's enough knowledge in this one phone right here that if there's anybody on any place in this world that you can get signal, I can tell them about Jesus Christ, friend. Any place in this whole world. I can tell you uh, about the Lord Jesus Christ. And it said over in the book of Matthew over there that when this gospel is preached into all of the world, he said, and then shall the end come. Amen. And then shall the end come. We're living there, friend. We're living there. But, but because of 2 Peter over there, chapter 3, verse 9, uh, for God is long-suffering to us, we're not willing that any should perish. Uh, friend, God don't want you to die and go to hell. But because you believe not the truth, listen to what it says in verse 11, for this cause, for this cause, God shall send strong delusions that they should believe a lie. That they should believe a lie. What is this lie? When the Antichrist comes, friend, he's going to set himself up as God down here on this world. And they're going to believe that. The world's going to flock to him. You say, how do you know that? Listen to what it says in the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 24, uh, uh, verse 24. Listen to what it says. For there shall arise Christ. Notice what that says. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they should deceive the very elect. If it were possible, they should receive you. Uh, they can't now. Who is the very elect? I thought about this. Who is the very elect? I've always used that talking about the children of Israel. They are the elect of God. God chose them before the foundation of this world. He chose a people over on the backside of the desert through the loins of Jacob, the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Them's God's chosen people. But friend, you and I, through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, amen, we've been adopted into that family. And because we've been adopted into that family, amen, uh, the promises of that family belongs to you and I also. Amen. And God elected to save me before the foundation of this world. I've been chosen unto salvation. And I have received the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. And because I've received him, uh, amen, I'm a part of that very elect that he talks about over there. And the, he said, that if it were possible. In other words, it's not possible, friend, that the devil can can deceive you if you have the blood of Jesus Christ applied down in your heart and soul. Amen. He can't deceive you. He's not going to deceive. God's not going to let him deceive the children of Israel uh, over on the other side. Amen. Over there. Uh, yeah, they're going to uh, they're going to step out. And there's some things going to be done, and there's going to be some peace uh, for a short time. Uh, but friend, listen to me. Amen. They can't deceive. They can't be deceived because God won't let them. Amen. And if God won't let it happen, you can count on that. It's not going to happen. Amen. Let's move on just right real quick. And they, that they might all, that they all, I'll get it right in a minute. 
that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. I want to read one more verse and then I'll, I'll hush. Amen. I've got several things on here, but I'm getting down to that point. Amen. Where they, I'm getting long-winded. Uh, friend, if I had the time, I could probably spend hours. Amen. Listen to what it says in Romans chapter 1, the last verse. Amen. Who knowing, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only to do the same, but have pleasure in them that do it. Amen. They've got pleasure in them that do it. Amen. Friend, God has chosen you to salvation. God has not chosen you to live your life down here and die and go to a place called hell. Amen. If you go there, you'll trample over the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and you will go into hell because you made that decision. And the world, friend, the world out there don't care whether you go there or not. Amen. Because sin is running rapid in our land today. And these things are happening that I never thought I would ever see as long as I've been down here in this world. And, and the, the iniquity is a working all over everywhere at all times. I want to stop right there by the help of God. I thank you. I appreciate you today. Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come to you today. God, ask you, Father, Lord, just give us strength. God, allow this message, Lord, to go out into the world, God, and touch hearts. God, help them to see, Lord, to praise your wonderful name that you chose them unto salvation. And God, I praise you, Father, for what you give. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen.